Well, hey guys, it's Josh here, just just uh, coming in here to check with you. Uh, today, it finally happens. I, I know I've been promising this for a few months now, but today marks the very first episode of the Home Lab series. Uh, and that's mostly because uh, I myself am planning yet another n new, fresh, hot, and fancy uh, redeployment. Which, of course, means that uh, I'm going to be setting up a new server from scratch, and uh, we're going to be making videos about this. Now, of course, this week, if if you may or may not have noticed, I've been posting a video every single day. And uh, that's not going to be a, pro a uh, process that I'm going to be keeping up. Uh, I'm going to go back to trying to post at least weekly. Uh, we'll see how well, how successful I am in that adventure. Because, you know, uh, this week has been... It, it's been a little much. Just a little bit. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so... But... First of all, let's talk about, like, our, uh, uh, the content guideline for, like, this series. Because, uh, honestly, I, I can go out and I can do the fancy thing where it's just like, hey, uh, I'm going to post, like, a video every single week about, like, setting up a Docker container, which I'm going to be setting up containers anyway. But, uh, what we're, but, uh, the process for, for this series is how I personally would set up a home lab. And uh, when I'm talking about a home lab, I'm not talking about, like, an actual lab system where I go in there, I break things, I test around, and I screw, screw around with everything. I, I'm actually going to be talking about it from the uh, perspective of a self-hoster. But yeah, basically, I'm going to be talking about it per, from a perspective of, uh, you know, uh, this, this perspective here where it's just like, I'm going to be talking about, like, my goals for a home lab, where... Uh, I have my own reasons, and uh, I I have these three primary reasons. First, I want to learn. I like to self-host, and I like to tinker. Where uh, basically, I uh, I see these comments on my channel that come in every now and then, where people talk about where I apparently know Linux, and it's like, uh, well, I don't necessarily know Linux. I just have years of using Linux and Googling. So uh, when people say that they want to learn Linux, I and they ask me how to learn Linux, the only thing I can really say is, use it. <laughs> so hopefully, throughout the course of this series, I can show you guys some examples of some really cool things that you can do with this operating system, because uh, when you have the freedom of control, you have the freedom of uh, actually learning and, and uh, practicing some of these things that you're going to be doing yourself. But I honestly, my primary reason for like the home lab, uh, well... When I talk about home lab, I I talk about from perspective of the home server, because uh, I've been doing this since before the term home lab has actually existed. I've always had a home server, and that's simply because uh, I have this very unique internet situation compared to like the rest of the world. Whereas uh, like some other YouTuber, YouTuber, uh, I don't have like a massive internet connection where it's just like I can just uh you know make use of a streaming service and everything. So in order to keep up with everything, I've done stuff where it's just like I've I've basically set have been forced to set up like a squid proxy before and, and uh, stuff like that. And uh, you know that's primarily like how I learned how to uh, use some of these utilities. But but uh, the the concept of this is me replicating a setup a system setup. That I actually want to use, like you know, setting up my own personal Steam cache, uh, or like uh, having my entire the entirety of my Steam library available to me at at all times. Uh, setting up and running media services, uh, set and uh, setting up a home cloud system using Nextcloud. So like some of the really cool things, except that where they're doing it because you know they think it's cool. I'm doing it because it's sort of necessary for me. Because uh, in order for me to, uh, I have used services like Google Drive. Uh, oftentimes, Google, uh, Google Drive's website, even if I'm using a Chromium-based web browser, which you know is supposed to be the uh, just works of internet browsers for Google services, uh, if I was to actually sit there and try to try to pull into Google Drive's web service, set it up, and get it working. Uh, that page can take somewhere between 45 seconds to, like, minutes to load. And I'm not kidding about that. <laughs> because uh, I have a DSL internet connection. My it, It's it's a little on the slower side. Uh, so uh, it's 
it's not the world's fastest internet connection and uh you know i'm gonna be talking about like uh, i'm gonna be showing like these these service these services that i personally set up for myself throughout the course of this and you know maybe you guys might actually enjoy enjoy the journey along the way but uh you, you guys know that i like to break things and i like to tinker a little bit and uh i'm going to try to move to like a more virtual infrastructure to doing that rather than you know breaking it on my desktop system a little bit more often uh so i'm gonna be setting up like virtual machines with like a uh, gpu pastor and all that but uh, the big thing is that i'm not going to be cheating i'm not going to be setting up anything like portainer or proxmox or anything like that i'm going to be doing everything from scratch so my platform of choice for this is not going to be gentoo i'm sorry <laughs> it's not but uh, we're just going to be, we're, we've done that insanity. We did that all last year. We're basically, I, I was managing like 20 plus Gen 2 devices. And it's just like, no, we're not going to be doing that. Uh, we're going to be basing everything off of a, uh, off of uh, a uh, distribution. And uh, I'm still trying to figure out which distribution I want to be setting up. But I want to, I'm going to be playing this. I'm going to be uh, walking through like my process for this video here. So I have these three questions I asked myself. Why do I home lab? Uh, obviously, I explained several of my parts. Or uh, several of my reasonings. Actually, let me just go through here just real quick and uh, get some proper English going on here. I failed my English classes in grade school. I'm sorry. So, yeah. Uh, this has been Wiki, by the way. It's pretty cool. But, yeah. Uh... So I've got like these sections in here where it's just like my reasons, uh, how I'm going to set up file sharing. And, uh, you know, I've never actually dealt with uh, actually setting up a Samba configuration for myself because I've always just used uh, SSH and NFS transfers. But, uh, you know, I, I saw some co cool stuff here with like iSCSI, so I might just set up an iSCSI share. But uh, the big thing is that... I this is basically what I'm wanting to do. Like, uh, you know, remote access. Uh, I can do tail scale. I can run my own VP, my own uh, VP. I can set up a remote VPS and then tunnel tunnel to my home services through WireGuard, or I can just mess around with Cloudflare tunnels, which uh, I don't know too much about. But you know, that could be pretty cool. Uh, VMs, I got nothing in there. Containers. Uh, these are containers that generally, like, uh, I might want to be looking at. As well as uh, some network infrastructure. Uh, I've been using like the TP-Link Omada stuff. And uh, it's been fine for the most part. Except that uh, I'm like one one device short from being locked into that infrastructure. <laughs> and uh, we're kind of at the point where it's just like, I need a switch. So uh, I'm I'm sitting here. It's just like really easy to buy like, like that TP-Link Omada switch. But I don't know if I want to buy the Yamada Switch. <laughs> so, uh, we're, we're, and I'm just still working through this document here uh, myself. But you know, uh, obviously, you guys know that I'm that uh, the first thing I'm going to be setting up is like some kind of file storage share. Uh, so we're going to be dealt. We're that's going to be like the very first episode coming out of this series here, where we're going to be setting up like at least an NFS share. Uh, t discussing discussing SSH uh, connections, so SFTP and such, and then uh, we might th we might delve into Samba on a different episode, but that's just because it's been a while since I, like I've actually had to configure Samba myself. Uh, I mean, I've done it before and I've got it working before, but uh, honestly, for like my own personal use case, I don't really need Samba. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna be digging into at least iSCSI. iSCSI, I think that's how. That's how they say it. And, uh, you know, just seeing if that's actually pretty cool. But for the most part, I've always just used NFS myself. Uh, NFS and, SS and SSHFS. But, of course, SSHFS is depreciated, so I'd have to set up SFTP through, like, my file manager, which is something that is perfectly doable. But uh, that's what we're going to be covering first. Because, realistically, the way that I see it, the main reason why you would set up something like this at home is a NAS. And the purpose of a NAS is to serve as network attached storage, which basically means that you want access to your files across your entire network. That's actually the primary. That's where I I think as like the home user, 
that's where you go first. You just want like a good, solid, massive, massive array of disks that you just dump files on, and then you want to be able to access them pretty easily. So uh, that's what that's what we're going to be delving into first, because honestly, most of the time when people people are talking about like setting up a setting up a home server or a NAS or or anything like that, they just want to be able to access like you know their files, and then you know it's just like everything everything from there will is what spirals out of the con spirals everything from there. So that's where we're going to be starting. Anyways, guys, uh, this is just this is just the first episode over overview of like the home lab series. So, uh, anyways, guys, I'm out of here for now. Uh, I will I will see you tomorrow. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what video we're gonna be doing tomorrow because uh, it's Friday. So I've got that episode. I've got that coming up, and then you know we got this tracking coming up later that same day, and then it's just like uh, I'm already a little short on ideas of things to talk about, and it's just like I don't un I I don't know if I like this weekly video schedule thing. <laughs> Or like this daily video schedule thing. Uh, I'm just doing it for the fun of it. <laughs> Anyways, guys. I'm out of here. If you need to shout at me, there's a link in the description down below.